What has happened, everyone? James Hancock here, back to give you my spoiler-free review of the new show Hellbound, coming to Netflix on Friday, November 19th. Netflix has asked that we not reveal any plot-specific information, but obviously, anything that's featured in the two trailers is totally fair game. Hellbound is based on a 2002 webtoon by director Sang Ho Yan. I apologize if I'm butchering his name, but most movie fans are probably most familiar with his insanely cool horror flick from 2016, Train to Busan. I didn't think his sequel was quite as strong as the first, but still well worth seeing. But he's now back in the director's chair for all six episodes of this new show, and he's rapidly becoming a director where I will watch anything he makes. At any rate, the premise of Hellbound, it's fascinating for folks who are into the supernatural. In an entertainment landscape full of tired formulas and exhausted franchises, Hellbound feels like this gnarly burst of originality and creativity. The story hits the ground running when suddenly out of the blue, people begin receiving these decrees from an otherworldly entity where they're told that they're going to die in a demonstration at a specified time, after which they're going to be sent to hell. And these demonstrations involve the sudden appearances of three lumbering demonic creatures that basically look like the Hulk and the Thing had a baby. They then proceed to beat the holy hell out of their victim in ruthless, gory fashion prior to burning them to a crisp, whereupon they vanish. It's really freaky stuff. But as is always the case when something horrible keeps happening, the real horror is not these creatures. The real horror comes after as we watch how terrified, confused people choose to interpret this horrific and unexplainable phenomena. Overnight, society changes as hordes of people embrace this new totalitarian religious organization known as the New Truth, as well as their more radical offshoot, the Arrowhead. And of course, anyone who refuses to kneel to their rigid belief system will be forced to kneel one way or another. As John Paul Sartre famously wrote, hell is other people. But I won't bury my opinion deep into the review. I'll admit that I was really into this show. Although, I'll admit that some of the central characters are less compelling than others. And there were times early on where I wondered if the story would have been better if it had been condensed into a feature film rather than a show. But then my opinion changed on episode four, where the show really finds that extra special gear and reveals what the story is all about and starts to build this incredible feeling of like this surging momentum because as terrifying and grotesque as the attacks by the demons can be which is illustrated perfectly in the first teaser trailer the real horror is watching so many people become delusional or just outright insane wrestling with the idea of what these attacks might signify an eerily charismatic figure known as Chairman Young invents the organization known as the New Truth, which makes the claim that all the victims of these attacks are sinners, and therefore the world must learn to be more righteous. And these sins are basically anything that the New Truth disapproves of, even something as innocent as having pornography on your computer. And what's terrifying is how half the world immediately gets on board as blind believers, wrapping themselves in the cloak of self-righteousness. But as we the audience see, many people who are being sent to hell are not guilty of any wrongdoing of any kind. The attacks by these demons are more often than not totally random, which leads to the formation of an underground organization devoted to tearing down the lies that prop up the New Truth's power structure. And the struggle between the New Truth and their enemies was the real highlight of the show for me in that it has so many depressingly familiar parallels with our own world. Hellbound becomes this brilliant cautionary tale of what happens when any group or institution appoints itself as the sole and final arbiter of what is the truth and what is the correct interpretation of unexplainable phenomena. Because the new truth, they invent and then impose their incredibly rigid set of rules, rules that everyone must adhere to. And of course, ignorance of the rules is no defense. And like with any corrupt ideology, it always needs fresh victims that can either be humiliated or tortured or killed to keep everyone else intimidated. This is a system where people are encouraged to spy on each other and are rewarded for doing so. And what I found most brilliant about the show was the way it exposed what happens to an institution like the new truth when confronted with any information that might make them question their assumptions or acknowledge that they're ideology is critically flawed. Rather than pause to reflect and possibly rethink their belief system, instead, this new information has to be buried or discredited. Once again, the parallels to our own world are right on point. And this struggle between the new truth, as well as their radical offshoot, the Arrowhead, and their enemies, inevitably leads to violence. And this is another area where the show really shines. If you have a taste for down and dirty, hand-to-hand -hand combat with great choreography and killer stunts, holy shit, this show 100% delivers, especially in the latter part of the season. Or if your taste goes all the way into the truly horrific, with people being burned alive for being non-believers, this show absolutely pulls no punches. Like I mentioned earlier, human beings in the show are far more terrifying than the demons that are running amok. And the show manages to really stick the landing with an incredibly satisfying conclusion and ending with the added bonus of a really cool, surprising cliffhanger, which makes you look at the entire season in a completely new light. So fingers crossed Netflix immediately green lights a season two. From my point of view, Hellbound is further proof that some of the most interesting genre storytelling in the world right now can be found in South Korea. 
Earlier this year, Squid Game became the most popular show Netflix had ever been involved with, and deservedly so. I thought Squid Game was amazing, in particular episode 6, which totally floored me. And while it's taken decades, I think the world at large at this point is finally catching on to the fact that South Korea consistently cranks out a lot of really cool film and television, and Netflix is very wisely choosing to go all in on the phenomenon. For folks who've been paying attention and taking notes, every year there's something really cool to see which comes out of South Korea. My first big aha moment came when I discovered the work of Park Chan-wook when I saw Old Boy at the Sundance Film Festival in 2005. And as a director, he's continued to crank out killer stuff like The Handmaiden in 2016. And of course, everyone now knows the name of Bong Joon-ho after Parasite took the world by storm. But that movie didn't come out of nowhere. Bong Joon-ho, he's been directing movies for 20 years. And then there are these kick-ass genre films like The Witch Part 1, The Subversion from 2018, which showed us just how gory battles should and would be if and when superpowered individuals with heightened strength and speed decide to throw down. My point is that for anyone out there who's exhausted by a lot of the really tired, obvious crap that gets cranked up at Hollywood, a show like Hellbound is going to feel like a breath of fresh air. And one final note, and it's embarrassing even having to say this, but I'm getting to the point where I've lost all patience with people when they complain about the poor dubbing on foreign shows on Netflix. I have a real simple fix. Change your Netflix settings to where you always watch shows in the language that the show was originally made. I recognize that some people out there regard the act of reading as some form of cruel and unusual punishment, but if you want to sit at the grown-up table and discuss international film and television, you got to learn to suck up the idea of subtitles. I've seen some people go so far as to claim they'd rather wait for an English language remake instead of watching a great foreign film or show. Well, these people are stupid, and nobody will ever take their opinion seriously. Just kidding, or maybe half kidding. But that's all I have for now. I hope folks enjoy the show as much as I did. If you like this review, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. But I can't thank you enough for watching the video. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.